Lesson 1. The Provocative Introduction Have you ever wondered how learning can impact your success or failure? Today, we're delving into the mind-stirring pages of Edward D. Hess's book, Learn or Die. This insightful work explores the profound role that learning plays in personal and organizational success. It's more than a book. It's a wake-up call, a challenge, a roadmap to the future where learning isn't optional, but a necessity. Buckle up for a journey that redefines the parameters of success. Let's dive into the book's chapters and uncover the secrets to effective learning. Lesson 2. The Learning Imperative Chapter 1. The Learning Imperative starts us off on a strong note. It drives home the point that continuous learning isn't just a nice-to-have, it's a must-have. It's not just about adding another feather to your cap, but rather it's about survival in an ever-changing environment where what worked yesterday might not work tomorrow. In this fast-paced world, individuals and organizations alike must be in a state of constant evolution continuously adapting to new challenges and opportunities. The chapter emphasizes the importance of maintaining a learning mindset, a mindset that doesn't shy away from new experiences and embraces the unfamiliar. This isn't just about acquiring new knowledge, but also about unlearning outdated concepts and relearning new ones. This cycle of learning, unlearning, and relearning is what keeps us relevant, resilient, and ready to tackle whatever comes our way. The learning imperative demonstrates that the key to survival is the ability to adapt and learn. Lesson three, the science of learning. The science of learning. This chapter illuminates the fascinating world of how our brains learn. You see, our brains are not static but rather dynamic and ever-changing. This is due to a process called neuroplasticity, which allows our brain to adapt and rewire itself based on our experiences. Every time we learn something new, our brain forms new connections, strengthening the neural pathways involved in the learning process. But it's not just about the brain. Emotions also play a significant role in learning when we experience positive emotions, our minds become more receptive to new information. On the other hand, negative emotions can hinder our ability to absorb and retain information. This is why it's so important to foster a positive learning environment. Whether you're studying for an exam or trying to master a new skill. So, how can we leverage this knowledge for effective learning? One way is through deliberate practice. This involves setting specific goals, seeking immediate feedback, and focusing on technique rather than outcome. It's about training our brains to learn in the most efficient way possible. Another strategy is to embrace a growth mindset. This means viewing challenges as opportunities for learning rather than obstacles to overcome. It's about believing in our ability to improve and grow rather than remaining stagnant. Understanding the science of learning can significantly enhance our learning process. Chapter four, learning organizations. Picture this, an organization where no idea is too small, where every mistake is a stepping stone to improvement and where learning is the heartbeat of the culture. Welcome to the world of learning organizations. Learning organizations are those entities that have mastered the art of continuous learning. They're not just places where people go to work. They're vibrant ecosystems where growth, innovation, and perpetual learning are interwoven into the fabric of everyday operations. They're the workplaces of the future today. The beauty of these organizations lies in their ability to evolve. They're not static. They're dynamic, ever-changing, and always improving. 
they're capable of adapting to the ever-evolving landscape of the business world, making them resilient in the face of adversity and primed for success. So, you might be wondering, how do traditional organizations transform into these learning powerhouses? Well, it starts with a shift in mindset. It's about embracing a culture that values learning over knowing. It's about fostering an environment where it's safe to question, to challenge, and to fail. It's about promoting curiosity and encouraging exploration. It's about creating a space where every individual is not just a worker, but a learner, a contributor, an innovator. And it's not just about the organization as a whole. It's also about the individuals within it. In learning organizations, everyone is a learner, from the CEO to the intern. Everyone is encouraged to learn, to grow, and to contribute their unique insights and ideas. This collective learning fuels the organization's overall growth and innovation. But don't just take my word for it. The proof is in the pudding, as they say. There are numerous examples of successful learning organizations out there, from tech giants to small startups, who are thriving thanks to their commitment to continuous learning. Learning organizations is more than just a chapter in a book. It's a call to action. It's a blueprint for success in the modern business world. It's a testament to the power of learning in driving growth, innovation, and success. Learning Organizations highlights the importance of creating a culture of continuous learning. Lesson five, learning leaders. It takes us into the role of leadership in learning. It's here that we begin to understand the crucial role leaders play in fostering a culture of learning. Leadership is not just about decision-making or strategic planning. It's about creating an environment where learning is encouraged, valued, and integrated into the fabric of an organization. It's about modeling the behaviors that emphasize the importance of continuous learning. Let's take a moment to think about the leaders we admire. What are the qualities that make them stand out? Quite possibly, their ability to learn, adapt, and grow in the face of challenges is high on that list. These leaders don't just have a thirst for learning for themselves, but they instill that same thirst in their teams. They understand that learning is not a destination, but a journey. They nurture an environment where questions are encouraged, where curiosity is rewarded, and where mistakes are seen as opportunities for learning. They celebrate the process of learning, not just the outcomes. But it's not just about creating a learning culture. Leaders also need to create systems that support learning. This could be in the form of training programs, mentorship initiatives, or creating spaces for open dialogue and exchange of ideas. These systems should not just be about imparting knowledge, but also about encouraging critical thinking, fostering creativity, and promoting collaboration. After all, learning is a social process. It's about learning from each other, learning together. Leaders who understand this, who value learning, and who create systems to support it are the ones who lead their organizations towards success, innovation, and growth. They are the ones who are able to navigate the complexities of the modern world, adapt to change, and stay ahead of the curve. And so, it's clear that leadership and learning are intertwined. One cannot exist without the other. Leaders who stop learning, stop leading. Learning leaders shows us that leaders play a crucial part in promoting a learning culture. They are the torchbearers of a culture of learning, lighting the path for others to follow. Lesson six, the final takeaways. Now that we've explored the chapters, what are the key takeaways from Learn or Die? Let's start with the learning imperative. 
This chapter emphasized that learning isn't a luxury, it's a necessity. In an era where knowledge is power, continuous learning is the key to personal and professional growth. Remember, the world doesn't stand still and neither should our understanding of it. Let's start with the learning imperative. This chapter emphasized that learning isn't a luxury, it's a necessity. In an era where knowledge is power, continuous learning is the key to personal and professional growth. Remember, the world doesn't stand still and neither should our understanding of it. Next, we journeyed into learning organizations. This chapter illuminated the importance of cultivating a culture of learning within organizations. It's not enough for individuals to learn. Organizations as a whole must learn, adapt, and evolve to survive and thrive in a rapidly changing environment. Following this, we explored learning leaders. Leadership isn't just about directing, it's about learning and facilitating learning. Leaders who are learners inspire a culture of curiosity, experimentation, and innovation. They understand that mistakes are not setbacks, but stepping stones to success. So, what does this all mean for you? These insights from Learn or Die are not just theories to be read, but principles to be lived. They call for a shift in perspective, a change in habit, and a commitment to lifelong learning. They urge you to question, to analyze, and to adapt. They encourage you to view challenges not as obstacles, but as opportunities to learn and grow. And what about organizations? They too must embrace these principles. They must foster a culture of learning where every mistake is a lesson, every challenge an opportunity, and every individual a learner. They must recognize that their success lies not just in what they know today, but in what they can learn tomorrow. Remember, in the rapidly evolving world of today, it's learn or die. So choose to learn, adapt, and thrive. 